In this tutorial video, I'm going to go through the laser cut and fill toolpath. The laser cut and fill toolpath can be used for cutting out shapes or marking areas with your laser tool. So first I'm going to go over to the toolpaths tab and click on the laser cut and fill tool. So in this tutorial video, I will be going down the toolpath form and going over every option. So to begin with, we'll look at the select tool option here. So if I click this, it will bring up the tool database. These will be the laser cutter tool settings I will be using as a demonstration in this tutorial video. But you will want to check the settings for the laser and material you are using. I would also recommend doing some test cuts to test which settings are correct for your laser. So here you can see we have three different tools, one for settings to cut through the material, one for a picture toolpath, and then another here for a marking toolpath. For this tutorial video, we will be using the marking toolpath settings. If we go over to this side of the tool database, you can see here, first we see the tool name. You can select this option here to edit the tool name if you would like. Underneath are the notes for the tools. So if you would like to add any notes for this tool, you can add this here. Next is the tool type. And as we are using a laser tool path, this is currently set as a laser cutter. The next section underneath is the geometry. The first setting here is the units. So this is the units we will be using for the tool settings. And next is the maximum power of the laser we are using. The section underneath here is the cutting parameters. The first setting here is the pass depth. The pass depth setting here will allow you to move the laser tool in the Z axis to keep the laser in focus if you were burning through material. I would recommend running test cuts to see how deep your laser burns to know what value to put here in the tool database. The next setting in this section is the kerf of the laser. The kerf is the width of material removed by the laser. This will depend on the material you are using. If the material burns faster or is thicker, it may change how much material is burnt. Again, I would recommend running test cuts in the material beforehand to see what value needs to be put here in the tool settings. The next setting here is the number of repeats. This is an option if you want the laser to repeat the cut to give a darker burn in the material depending on the cut you are looking for. Please note that this will not move the tool in the Z axis position and will burn the repeat tool paths in the same Z position. We then move to the feeds and speeds section. The power is the percentage of the maximum power of the laser that we are going to use for this cut. Next is the feed units we are going to use for the next two settings. Next we have the move speed. This is the speed the machine will run when cutting. You may need to vary the move speed to reduce burning and melting in the material you are using. Again, I would recommend doing test cuts in the material to see what value is best for this setting. The next setting on the list is the maximum burn rate. This value is only used by the software in the toolpath preview to simulate the burn effect of the laser. When running a toolpath preview, if you are finding that the laser toolpaths are cutting lighter or darker than what you are seeing on your machine, you will need to edit this value so it creates a toolpath similar to what you are seeing on the machine and the laser tool you are using. And then the last option here is the tool number. So I'm going to click select here as we will want to be using this tool for this demonstration. The option next to select is edit. This will allow you to change the toolpath settings for this toolpath only. Any settings changed here will not be applied to the main tool database and will only be used when creating this toolpath. We do not need to change any of the settings, so I'm just going to click cancel here. 
Underneath the tool selection, you can see that some of the tool settings are listed below. This is a quick way to see the tool settings you've selected and also edit them for this toolpath. So here you can see that the power, so the percent of the maximum power is listed. Next, the move speed. The next option available here is the cut depth. This is currently greyed out as we will only be marking the material, but if you wanted to cut through the material, here you'd be able to set the cut depth. And here it would show the number of passes that the laser tool would need to take. The reason the cut depth and number of passes is currently greyed out is because as we are only marking the material, we don't have a pass depth currently set for these laser tool settings. If you have a pass depth set in the tool database, you will see these options available. The next setting here is the number of repeats. This is currently set to one, but if you needed to edit this, instead of needing to go back into the tool database, you can edit the repeats here. Next is the overscan option, which I will go through later on in this tutorial video. Next, we're going to look at the toolpath cutting strategies here. The first option here you'll see is the cut out side and right option. This will run the laser around the outside of the vector you have selected or along the right hand edge if the vector is open. This option will automatically offset the toolpath, the width of the curve that was set for the laser in the tool database from the edge of the vector. This is also the same for the cut inside and left option but instead this will be cut along the inside of the vector or the left hand side if it is an open vector. For these options, you can also add an additional allowance offset to the toolpath. The allowance offset option here will allow you to add an additional offset for the cut outside and cut inside toolpath strategies without having to go and adjust the curve settings for the laser. This could be useful if you are trying to cut a part that is going to fit into another part that you have already cut to make sure the two parts fit correctly. When using a positive allowance offset, this will allow you to offset the toolpath in the direction you have currently selected. For example, if you've used the cut outside option, this will offset the toolpath further outside the vector. And again, if you select the inside option, this would offset the toolpath further inside the vector selected. So then the next option here in the list is the cut on option. As you can see here, the toolpath will cut on the vector. So this will have no offset for the laser and it will run directly on the vector you have selected. The next option is the hatch fill option. So with the hatch fill options, you can see that you have these settings now available. So the first setting is the step over, which this gives you the option to determine the spacing between the lines that are going to create the hatch fill. And then the next option here is the hatched angle. So this will determine the angle that the lines are cut in. So for this example, I will keep the step over at 0.05 inches with a hatch angle of 45 degrees. So if we select this vector here and click calculate. So if we preview this toolpath, so I'm going to preview the visible toolpath here. You can see here that it creates a hatched toolpath at a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to reset the toolpath preview. So now if we go back into the toolpath and select this option here so we can see the vectors in the 3D view. And we're going to have a look at these two options here. So I'm going to select the cross hatch option. This option will create a cross hatch fill. So it will create another set of lines going in the opposite direction at the same step over an angle that we've set here. And then the outline option here we're going to select as in the previous toolpath we just previewed it did not cut the outline of the vector selected just the hatch fill so with the outline option selected here it will also run the laser around the vector that you have selected as well 
So if we select calculate here and we can preview the toolpath now, you can see that it is creating a cross hatch pattern and is also cutting out the outline of the vector selected as well. So I'm going to reset this and go back into the toolpath. The next setting we're going to look at is the strategy for the hatch fill. So these options are fill together, fill regionally or fill regionally within vectors. To show the difference between these strategies, I'm going to open another example file with these three strategies included. So in this file, you can see that I have the same text three times all using the different strategies for the hatch fill. So here at the top, you can see the fill together strategy. Here is the fill regionally. And here is the fill regionally within vectors. So here you can see that each strategy creates a slightly different toolpath. With these strategies, you are likely going to choose the strategy which is quicker for your machine, which will highly depend on the machine's ability to accelerate and decelerate and on the vector designs themselves. So for the top one, fill together. So I'm going to turn the other two off for now so we can see this toolpath clearly. You can see it will start in this corner and then cut along using all of the vectors selected until it gets to the other side of the vector selected which is different to the fill regionally option here. As you can see here, as it cuts out each vector separately instead of all together. So in this example, it is cutting the T out first and then we'll move along to the E and then it will move along to the next vector and then the next vector. And then the fill regionally within vectors, you can see here that the toolpath stays within the vector selected. So if we close this example here and, and go back to the original file, we can see now the next option is the multi-pass repeat, which currently is grayed out as we are only running the toolpath once and not repeating it. So if I change this to two, you can see now that this option becomes available. So for this, there are two options. So the first multi-pass repeat option is the whole design. This means if you have selected to repeat the laser toolpath, then it will run the whole design on the first pass and then go back to the beginning of the design to run the second pass. If you select the each raster line instead, it will repeat the laser toolpath after cutting each line. So it will cut one line and then instead of going over to the next line, it will repeat that line again first before moving along. The next option we are going to look at is the overscan option. The overscan option allows the user to have the laser move past the edge of the lasered area. This will turn the laser off at the edge of the lasered area, but will allow the machine to continue moving. You can use this option if you are seeing a darker edge to your laser burn due to the machine deceleration at the end of a toolpath. This is machine dependent and you will need to run tests to know how much overscan you will need if you are seeing a darker burn to the edge of your laser cuts. Then the last option on the form is the show output option. After clicking this option, you can now see you have the option to save toolpaths in the cut and fill toolpath. So for this demonstration, I'll be selecting desktop and a Gerbil post processor. For more information on how to add the correct post processor to the software for your machine setup, I would recommend watching the how to set up your machine configuration tutorial video. But for this example, we will be using the Gerbil post processor. The next two options here are grayed out. The first option is the add side to toolpath name. You will be able to set this option if you have created a two sided project and this will allow you to add which side of the project this toolpath is for. The next option here is the output direct to machine option. This will allow you to 
directly transfer the toolpath to the controller for your machine from the software. Please note that only a very limited amount of machines are able to do this as this will depend on the machine and controller you are using. The next option here is the save toolpath. So when you click this, this will allow you to save the toolpath file for this laser cut and fill toolpath. So these are all the options available from the laser cut and fill toolpath. I hope you have found this laser cut and fill tutorial helpful. To see the laser in action, we recommend you take a look at the getting started with the Vectric Laser module video.